Having now heard the plans laid out in the budget, what are your initial thoughts? Uh, I think I was very struck by um, how serious the whole thing was. Um, there was absolutely no attempt to um, dilute the message. Uh, there was no attempt to depart from the message. And this was a surprisingly non-political budget other than doing the obvious of laying the blame at the uh, previous government's um, feet. Uh, it was very clearly focused on what needs to, need, needs to be done and um, there was absolutely no, it was not a givers or t it was, it, there were no winners or losers in this budget. It was a very serious um, enunciation of our position um, and in that sense it was a little bit, it was somewhat unusual because in budgets people look for gainers and they look for the losers. I think the one message that came across in this afternoon's presentation was that we're all in this together and at the moment there is nobody winning. We've got to get back somehow to a position from which we can win. Well, talking of us all being in this together, how do you feel that the changes laid out will actually affect the economy? I think it's going to be a... It, it, well, um, whatever we do is going to have... A, it's going to be a slow recovery. Um, the, some of the impacts we've yet to see are particularly on the public sector and employment in the public sector. It seems likely that uh, there will be job losses in the public sector, which may not be in the um, main ministries themselves, but could, for example, accept pe uh, affect people like contractors who are currently employed uh, on contract by the public sector. It seems pretty unlikely, given the fact that there has to be a 25% cut in some of those budgets, it seems pretty unlikely that they're going to be offering jobs to contractors or anybody in the foreseeable future. And on an individual basis, is there anything that we can do personally to beat the budget? No, I think this is, this is pretty, um, this is one of those budgets where it's almost pointless looking for ways in which you can beat the budget. Um, it, 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 there may be one or two people who might be able to avoid some of the excess or some of the impacts of the CGT rises. Um, but realistically, as I said at the, at, at the beginning, we're all in this together. It's not a matter of being able to gain um, from it uh, or trying to mitigate the loss that arises as a result of it. Um, this, is, this is a budget which is essentially looking some years ahead to a point in time where situation normal can be restored and then we might begin to look, might be able to look at how we might prosper and profit from budgets at that time. And in relation to the Chancellor's message that Britain is open for business, how does that actually translate into businesses prospering in Britain? Uh, well, it comes back to um, uh, the, the fact that there is only one source of growth realistically going forward, and that is to come from the, the private sector. Um, growth can only come from four places. One is consumer expenditure, and clearly if there's less money around, that's not going to happen. Uh, it can come from government expenditure, and we've just heard that that's going to be cut by 25% uh, across most departments, so it's not going to come from there. Um, it can come from overseas investment and an excess of a a exports over imports. Well, that'll have a very limited effect if and when it happens. So that only leaves um, business investment and expenditure as the driver of growth going forward. So the announcements made today, which were focused on on ensuring that can happen um, are really the only option open to the government at the moment in terms of generating growth for the future because that growth will have the biggest impact on the reduction in the deficit.